Hi guys, welcome back to the channel. So today I'm here at the Whistle Museum and I'm here to see a very, very special locomotive that they've had here and it's been lovingly restored and yeah, I'm not gonna say anymore. Um, all I'll say is you need to come here and see this locomotive, absolutely stunning. So join me as we have a look around the Whistle Museum. Let's go. In the early 1800s, the Industrial Revolution was in full swing and railways had really started to take under their own traction. No pun intended. At this time, there were almost celebrity status engineers around the country and none more famous than Isabel Kingdom Brunel and, of course, George and Robert Stevenson. In 1830, the now famous Canterbury and Whitstable Railway was formed, although to locals it was known as the Crab and Winkle Line, mainly for the seafood for which Whitstable had become famous for. In essence, all the big names, as it were, had been involved with the railway at one point in the process. George and Robert Stevenson built the Invicta, the locomotive which pulled the passenger trains. Isambard inspected the Lions Tunnel route, which was the first in the world to take passengers, and Thomas Telford constructed the harbour for which the railway would end. The harbour would come later in 1832 to serve the needs of Canterbury, importing and exporting goods. But on Monday the 3rd of May 1830, passengers bear witness to a clanking locomotive pulling in called the Invicta. Now Invicta was based on Stevenson's rocket, its famous little brother so to speak, due to Invicta coming into service four months earlier. Invicta managed 12 horsepower and in consequence could not handle the gradients of the line and so only ran between Boghole and South Street. Due to this the rest of the line was served by steam driven winding engines which would haul the trains by cable. In 1836, Invicta had run out of purpose and was replaced by a third winding engine, which would coincide with the locomotive being put up for sale. Unfortunately, the locomotive was never sold and was left undercover. She would be exhibited at railway exhibitions from time to time until she was donated to the city of Canterbury in 1906, which she would be exhibited near the city walls just outside Riding Gate. Fast forward to the 16th of June 2019, in front of dozens of spectators, Invicta was lifted over the rooftops in Whistable and arrived at its now permanent home 189 years after it had first arrived. In regards to the Crabbe and Winkle line itself, it is a charming 7-point mile cycle ride between Canterbury and the harbour of Whistable. Along the way you can enjoy ancient broad-leaved woodlands and much more, and it is enjoyed by hundreds of thousands each and every year. And just another little fact for everyone as well, so this was actually built in 1829 for the Clowes, Wood and Tyler Hill sites and it had 25 horsepower. So yeah, you'll probably think to yourselves, why is Invicta so significant? So Invicta is significant, so long story short, it was built in 1829 by Robert and George Stevenson and it had 12 horsepower. Now initially it was built and ran on the Crab and Winkle line as it is now locally known and it was the very first passenger steam railway in the world and it actually opened up four months before the Liverpool and Manchester line. So this is why it's so significant here and really why it is really, really good for both the stationary engine and Invicta have been restored and brought here for everyone to see. But like I say, we're going to have a quick look at the rest of the museum because if you're a sci-fi nerd, they have got a little bit of a section here for a limited time only that is really worth looking at as well. No. Is this for oysters? It's 
So yeah, if you are here in the Whitsbourne Museum, guys, you have the Peter Cushing collection. So Peter actually resided in Whitstable. There are various artifacts, pictures, documenting his life. So yeah, for anyone who doesn't know Peter Cushing, guys, he's majorly famous for the House of Horror, the Hammer Horror films, Sherlock Holmes, he played the Doctor, and he was also Grand Moff Tarkin in the first Star Wars film. And he came from Whitstable, so absolutely amazing exhibition, I'd really highly recommend you come here. So yeah guys, that's been my trip to the Whitsball Museum. I really, really hope you've enjoyed that. I really enjoyed seeing it, Victor live in person for the first time. Seeing that stationary engine, obviously that used to pull the wagons up on the incline there on the line as well. I've really enjoyed seeing the Crab and Winkle line. You can walk the whole line. It is a cycle line if you want to go and do that yourself or you can just walk it. It's entirely up to you. Really implored you to go down to Whitsball and check the line and Invicta Dow itself. But yeah, it's just been amazing. Like I said, it's an added bonus that they've got that whole section there dedicated to Peter Cushing, absolute legend. You know, Star Wars, Doctor Who, The Hammer House of Horrors, Sherlock Holmes, the list goes on. The bloke's a living legend. Um, so it's just an added bonus. And I don't think it's there for, uh, I don't think it's there permanently. So I'd really implore you to go down there and see it whilst you can. But yeah, it's been another episode. I really hope you've enjoyed that. Like, comment, subscribe. I'll see you in the next one. See you guys.